Welcome to your 2025 New Air floor plan 3547. We will start here in the front driver's cockpit area with the HWH computerized leveling pad. The first control pad that you see here on the left side of the driver's console is your HWH leveling control. And to power this leveling control up, you just reach over and turn the ignition on or turn it to accessories and you'll see you get additional uh, lights that come on here that indicate we're slightly off level and to level the coach um, you can do it manually by pressing these buttons for extend and retract or you can just hit the auto level button now before you put your coach uh, into auto level or um, you do it manually, you're going to want to walk around the coach and just make sure that there's nothing underneath where the jack uh, uh, pads are going to be extending towards the ground. And you also want to check the reveals on your slide out. Make sure that your slide out reveals are about an eighth inch, or excuse me, make sure that your slide out reveals are three eighths of an inch. And then you'll be able to go into auto level after you've run your slide rooms out. So leveling should only take place after you've checked your reveals and made sure that you can run your slide rooms out after the slide rooms are out. Then you'd want to go into the leveling process. So to do that, you'll turn the key on, hit auto level. And what you're hearing is the air going out of the bags as the coach is going into the leveling process. It takes a minute or two uh, to go through the complete leveling cycle. And once each jack is down, you'll see a red light that comes on to tell you that that jack in that corner is down. So you can see the coach is slightly moving as the jacks are going down. If the area that you're on has too much of a slope, then the excess slope light would come on. And then you'd have to move your coach to a more level position. But we're good here because the excess slope light is not on. If at any time during this process you want the jacks to um, store and go back up, you would just hit auto store. But now you can see all of our jacks are down and our yellow lights are off, the showing, up, showing us that we're in a level position. So now we can turn off the ignition. And what you were hearing there was a, a warning signal that the ignition was on. Uh, while it was in the leveling process because the air wasn't in the airbags anymore. So now we're level and we'll do the exact reverse process for auto store that we did when we ran our slides out. So to go into auto store and bring the jacks up, we turn the key on, let the coach air up, run the slide rooms in, and then after the slides were in, then we would go into auto store. So we'll show you that. Turn the key on. After the coach is aired up, then you would go into auto store. As each jack retracts in the corner of your coach, 
when it's fully retracted, the light will go out. So before you travel, you want to make sure all your red lights are out. All right, so your last jack is up. The jack warning sound has gone away. And once you have full air in your airbags, you'll be able to travel. So uh, right now um, it's showing that we have auto stored. Again, if you at any time wanted to, you could extend or retract these manually. Um, but it's just about as easy to use the auto level and then auto store button to level. Just in front of our leveling pad, we have our mirrors. Our mirror adjustments are left and right. And if it's in the center, then you're not going to make any adjustments. Uh, we recommend that you leave it in the center if you're not going to be making adjustments. That way, in case you um, touch one of the adjustments, it won't uh, uh, move the mirror. The uh, red switch just beside that is for the heater, the heated mirror part. You can see I've turned the ignition on, so when it's illuminated red, then the heat is on the back side of the mirror, so it will defrost or get the moisture off the mirror. If it's not uh, needing that, then just turn that off. Your automatic traction control is for bad weather. Uh, this is your window for the driver's side, open and closed. Just in front of that, you've got your cup holders and battery boost here. Your battery boost uh, will connect the house batteries with the chassis batteries. Uh, if you need to start your coach and it's not turning over, hold down the chassis battery boost for 30 seconds and then go ahead and start your engine. If your house batteries need a boost, then you hold it towards the house side for 60 seconds and then enable your inverter and charger. This is your dome light on and off. And, and these are your fog lights. Your fog lights, uh, if you turn those on, then your bright headlights will come on um, and then when you turn it off of your brights then your fog lights will come on. These are your headlights turning on and off. They're in set in the zero or the off position now. If you go to the A side that's automatic so your headlights will just come on automatically. Zero is just off and then these are your parking lights and your headlights. Just beside our headlight switch, we have our parking brake. A parking brake needs to be engaged when you come to a stop and you're going to park. Always pull towards you to engage, push forward to disengage. You want to make sure that your foot is on the manual brake when you disengage because then you would be putting the coach into drive or reverse. Just below the headlight, you have your phone wireless charger here. And moving over to our glass dash, this is your instrument cluster for all of the functions um, that you make here on your wheel, uh, turn signals or gear shift. Those all indicate here on the glass dash. So for instance, if I turn left, my left turn signal shows here, right is here. If I go dim or bright, you can see that is over here. This is my wiper wash. If I push that, my wipers will come on and wash. And the intermittent uh, can be adjusted here intermittent on, low and high, and um, regular wiper and high. Zero is off for the wipers. And as we just showed, um, 
pushing it forward is our bright lights. And if our fog lights are on, they'll come back on when we pull it off of the bright mode. On our steering wheel, this cluster is going to appear for the home screen in the center of the glass dash. So if I press the home button, then I get a selection of what's available on that home page. I can scroll up or down just by using these arrows, scrolling down. I can make a choice. Let's say I wanted to look at my tire pressures, then I need to press OK. And then all my tire uh, pressures are going to show for all of my wheels. <clears throat> when you want to go back, just make another selection, click on the home page and scroll down to a different selection. Let's say my fuel economy, press OK. <clears throat> now that's going to show uh, what my economy is. Here it says hold OK to reset. So if I want to reset that, and it just resets there. So using that home screen button, you can dial into any one of these and reset it, uh, your trips reset or turn the function on or off. There is a favorites button here. So if you press that, my favorites currently is set to my steering effort because this has comfort steer. Um, so we can use the up or down arrows and make those adjustments here. The uh, plus and minus arrows are for your media center for your infotainment volume. And the cluster on the right is uh, to set your cruise control. Um, when you press that, the cruise control will come on when your engine starts. You'll be able to see this icon on your glass dash. Then to set it, you just press the set or resume button. You can also use the telephone icons here on the wheel to make a call or hang up. You can see the glass dash changes when I do that. We don't have that paired with a phone right now, so it's not going to show. There is uh, the button here on the far right of the wheel is to inter, uh, just it's to flash your lights, your headlights and parking lights. When those are on, just they'll flash. Let's do an example here. So if I press those. The center of the wheel is your horn. You have your air horn or your street horn. Currently, it's set to the air horn. <clears throat> if I turn that off, then we just have our street horn. Starting on the left side of the dash, you've got your RPM indicator for your engine. Of course, the home screen that we talked about here for the left side of the uh, steering column. We have our speed indication here for miles per hour. This can be changed to kilometers if you need uh, to do that. Just go into your home screen and change that. We have our engine temperature here, uh, our gear shift indicator. Right now we're in neutral, and we'll show you that in a second. Uh, we, of course, have our fuel indicator in our uh, ultra low sulfur deal or uh, diesel uh, DEF indicator here. We have our air indicators here, um, front and rear for our airbags and distance to empty and our voltage of our chassis batteries. So just remember this voltage reading is for the chassis, not the house batteries. Currently the red letters here show that our parking brake is set and that's the yellow handle one so if we release that the park brake light will go out and that's when we would hold our brake pedal and put it in drive or reverse on the far left side of this column there's a foot pedal if i depress that foot pedal i can make changes in the way the steering wheel moves forward back and then i can release to lock 
or I can telescope the wheel towards me or away and then release. If I want to get the wheel all the way forward and just get it out of my way to exit the seat, I can do that. You'll notice on the right hand side here is another lever. This is your gear shift lever. It gives you the option of turning it into automatic, so automatic or manual. So if you want to use it as a paddle shift, the indicator for the paddle shift is here. Uh, most of the time you're just going to leave this in automatic. In addition to that being a paddle shift, there is an engine brake. So as I move this engine brake off or on, that's going to help slow the vehicle down without using the actual brake pedal. You'll notice here when you move that engine brake on, now it's using the icon for the engine brake. It's off, then you won't see it. At the far left side of the column, down a little bit lower, you'll be able to reach down and you'll feel a small button. If we press that, we'll hear a tone outside on the door handle, and that's to reset the lock for your Trimark door handle. So if I wanted to change the code for the entrance passcode, I would press that button and then go outside, enter my new five-digit code twice, and then that would change my Trimark door handle entrance passcode. Above here is an adjustment uh, for your pedals. You can uh, rotate this up so the arrow is pointing up or down. Once it's in the towards the arrow is the arrows towards the pedal, then I can adjust the pedals forward or back. No move. When I'm done making that adjustment, I would just turn this arrow so it's pointing to zero. That way, it won't make adjustments. Uh, if I just happen to bump it inadvertently. So to the right of our glass dash is our infotainment center. Our infotainment center is a split screen view. When you turn it on, you'll be able to see a split screen. On the right is the camera. On the left is your radio or infotainment center. It takes a second for it to power up to view. So you'll see all of your camera views are on the right and your infotainment is on the left and these are the selections you get when you press the menu. So I can see the camera view here and I can go to camera control here or cam here it's the same um, way to navigate to the camera settings. This one's a little faster because it's right on the outside of the screen. And this gives you the option of different views that you have in the coach. That's your right. When you turn on your right turn signal, this is the view that you're going to see. If I manually turn that camera on, I can see that left-hand side or driver's side of the coach. But again, that comes on when I turn the left turn signal on. To see the rear, that's my view. Now I can, I can change that one to a little bit closer or, or further just by pressing either one of those. That's a close-up view and this is a further back view. The center one is about where you'd have it typically. So that is how you adjust your cameras. If we go in back into the menu, you'll see that there's a nav, a navy one. Well, there's one here too. So you can get to your navigation here just by touching outside, or you can go into the menu and go to the same place. Once you click on navigation, you have to accept the terms in order to go on to use the navigation system. Now we can see it's uh, ready to help us see where we're at, which we're on Cheyenne Street now. But to navigate, we just press the menu 
now we can choose a new route or a route that we already had. We can scroll uh, to other um, with the arrow forward or arrow back to other settings if we wanted to shop. Obviously, we can do that. But our navigation uh, is here, and we can use this, the scroll arrows here as well. If we're going to choose, um, let's say we wanted to make a brand new route, we could just type in the name of where we wanted to go, um, or we could click on one of the other destinations uh, that we already had here. We could go into our saved locations or just type in the address or even a zip code or just a street name uh, to help us find out where that address would be. Back to the menu. We can choose radio. We can, we can choose the radio, either uh, AM, FM bands. We have the selection for Sirius radio. <clears throat> if you select the Sirius radio, radio you're going to have to um, order the subscription for that. Otherwise, you're just going to get the uh, channel uh, that tells you um, you are, are at Sirius but don't have any of the channels. In between the Sirius and the radio icons, you've got your media center. Media center would be preloaded music. You have your Bluetooth, so if you select that, you can connect your phone and make fo your telephone calls here, or you can play music. Uh, if you have music on your iPad or your phone, you just click on that, and now you can see um, the ID that you need to connect that device to. There's an HDMI selection here. Um, obviously, we don't have our HDMI plugged in right now. There's an auxiliary. We talked about camera and navigation. When you first set up, that icon is here. Um, this gives you uh, even a compass display if you need it. There's two pages here. So you have time settings and factory settings as well as Wi-Fi settings. If you choose Wi-Fi settings here, Oops, didn't go quite fast enough. Let's go back to Wi-Fi settings on page two. Now you can see the selections of Wi-Fi that you have in the area. Back to the menu. So we also have a favorite a favorites button here. It's currently set to our Sirius XM for favorites. This is the volume control um, for the Bluetooth here. To turn it off, you just press and hold. And that's the splash screen is always going to be on to tell you that it's currently turned off. Whenever you select the radio or Sirius XM, if you want to hear those stations outside at the entertainment center. We'll show you that in a little bit. If you want that music to play on the Bose speaker um, outside, you have to press the house mode button and then you'll see it illuminates and then you'll be able to hear the radio out there. Okay, good. So visor, visor, shade. Starting at the left side of our toggle switches, we have the visor for our driver's side, our visor for the windshield. We have our shade up and down. This shade will not go down if the ignition is turned on. It will always go up. So if you're trying to make a shade adjustment and it keeps going up, that means that your ignition is turned on. 
that's a safety feature that Numar builds in so that if the ignition is turned on, the shade will always go up at least to the halfway position on both the shade for the night and the day shade so that your view isn't blocked going out to the road. We have our docking light switch on and off. Our overhead fans help defrost the windshield. If we turn those on and our ignition is on, you'll hear the overhead fans. We can adjust them here to different speeds. That's high, medium, and low. If we don't need to move air here in the front for defrosting or just air movement, we can leave that off. There is another fan up in the front here near the floor area, near these louvers at the bottom. This is for heating. We can turn that on low or high, and that'll give us heat in this area as long as our uh, ITR Oasis is turned on. Beside that is our generator. If we press that, the generator will come on and we can use that if we don't have shore power. If we want to turn it off, just press stop. Our entrance door lock and unlock is here. This was our air horn that we showed you earlier. If we want to have our street horn on or air horn, we can make that selection here. Our courtesy lights are here. That kind of illuminates the floor area. And we have the visor over there on the passenger side. Just below our toggle switches, we have our heating and air conditioning control center, and that's only for the cockpit area here. As long as that's turned on to number one and the ignition is on, we'll be able to have uh, air conditioning or uh, heat if the engine's warmed up. If we're using the air conditioning, we want this to the left and we want the snowflake icon turned on and we want to see the blue LED just above it. That has to be on. To recirculate the air in this cockpit area, we would press the recirculate button. And then we can make our adjustments for defrost or just changing the air to these louvers here um, or just the floor only or just center only. When we're done, we just turn it off here. Just below that, we have our storage drawers. As long as your keys are in close proximity to our engine start and stop, we'll be able to start the engine. If you take this outside or to the back of the coach, or even uh, you know halfway back, you won't be able to start uh, your engine. So this has to be up in the cockpit area uh, to start the engine. Oh, and that's more storage there. So as you enter the coach, Numar puts these switches uh, right as you come into the first couple steps that's so that you can turn on your battery disconnect. Once your house batteries are connected or turned on, this red light will illuminate. And that's so that you can turn on your ceiling lights uh, right here or operate other things like your uh, baggage door locks here and your step well lights along with the patio lights. If you need to turn the battery disconnect off, just press this again and the red light will go out and that disconnects the house batteries from the coach. Moving up, we have your cup holder here. And of course we talked about the ceiling lights before. All ceiling lights can just be turned on just by pressing that down. Just beside that is your step cover. Your step cover where I'm standing, there's a uh, step that comes out that you can stand on that brings you up so that you're as high as the floor. So if I press that, the step cover goes out and comes up. 
and now I can stand in this place here without having to worry about the steps. When I want to store that back away, just make sure I move off of it so there's no weight on it, and then just press the opposite way, and it stores. The visor is right here uh, behind the drape. The map light is here. And I've got a phone charger here. This screen is your buddy screen for your navigation and camera settings. Uh, this mirror image is uh, the same as what you see on the driver's side. We just power it up and then we can go to either navigation or camera here and we can change our settings up or down. We can scroll through the settings here. So it's the same as the one up front. It's just a smaller version. So we're going to look at the seats, starting with the passenger seat here. Uh, you've got a tablet holder, and you just insert that here. And now you can adjust this for the different size of tablet that you might have. If you're not using it, just remove it. We're going to talk a little bit here about the controls for the seat. The seat controls are all electric for reverse and forward, or tilt, the base. And then we have our, our leg rest coming out here, up and down. We have our seat back, tilt, forward and back. And then we have our lumbar support, and that's going to be right here on your lumbar. And then we have the heat. So we can go to either high or low heat, or in the middle is off. If you don't see the LED light, it's off. These controls are the same as the driver's seat. The only thing that you don't have is the tablet holder on the driver's seat. A neat feature that you have with the seat is you can rotate it around to the living room area. On the right-hand side, there's a lever, and we'll show you that in a second. If you have the seat forward far enough, uh, the seat back forward far enough, you can spin this around by releasing the lever on this side. And then you can rotate the seat around into the living room area. You can see the lever uh, to release that is right here. Just lift that up and the seat will turn. No adjustments for the armrests because the armrests automatically tilt as you tilt the seat. But they do they uh, move up or down, so you can store them back in the back position. When you're ready to rotate the seat back around, just grab a hold and turn, and you'll hear it lock back into place when it's facing straight forward. So here above the driver's seat. We've got some storage area here and here. And just above the steering wheel, we have the Wi-Fi Ranger and the satellite receiver area. If you install the satellite receiver here, uh, the satellite prep is here so you can run your wires through. There's a 120 volt outlet there. Uh, the Wi-Fi router is here. This is a Wi-Fi Ranger router and uh, this Wi-Fi Ranger has to be powered up uh, with 12 volt power to operate. There's additional space here uh, that you could put your receiver or receivers uh, for your satellite in this area. Up at the top right corner there's an additional switch and that's to turn the video on. Video selection is for if you wanted to view the video um, online with your MyRosy account. Our next panel over are your controls. For your battery, 
and awnings and television along with your miscellaneous equipment. We'll start in the upper left corner. There is a solar prep area here. Um, if you wanted to add solar prep, a controller, you could do that. Beside that is your Girard awnings control. This awning control, um, as soon as you touch it, it illuminates and you can go to different channels. There's only two awnings. So if you wanted to uh, move one awning, it would be channel one. If you want, wanted to move the rear awning, that would be channel two. If you wanted to move both awnings at the same time, that's channel zero. So then with it set to zero, I can press in or out here or stop, or I can turn the lights on, uh, the LED lights on the awning. Just beside the Girard control, you've got your television antenna control. It's a powered antenna. So to power it up and search for channels, you would press the button in the upper left and it goes through a scan and it scans for channels. It's currently found nine channels that you would be able to view when you turn your TV on. You can make slight adjustments here uh, to turn um, to get a little bit better reception. If you're not happy with the number of channels, you can just hit the research button here and it searches again for more channels. That needs to be on uh, to see your channels on TV over the air channels, but you need to turn it off if you're gonna watch cable. So this needs to be off to watch park cable. If that's left on, you won't be able to see the cable channels. So turn that off and you'll be able to watch cable. Just to the right of that, you have your BMS, your battery management system. It's like a battery disconnect. If I turn this off, it powers the battery down. This is a lithium battery system. So as long as this is illuminated blue, my BMS is on and it's gonna allow power to come into the coach. If I press that, it turns the batteries off. If I see that the blue light is gone or it just went out, that means typically that I'm on my last 10% of my battery and you can press your button to turn it back on, but remember, since you're on your last 10%, you need to charge those batteries by enabling your inverter and turning on your inverter charger and making sure that either you plug in the shore power or start your generator. You don't want to use the very last 10% of your battery without charging it back up. Moving over here, we have your optional satellite, miscellaneous equipment. This is your right Wi-Fi router that we talked about. You have to have that powered up. If you want to have your router working, your entrance step override keeps the step in the out position, even when you close your door. There are exterior LEDs that light up underneath the slide rooms or the slide outs and you turn that on. These are the driver's side slide out and the passenger side slide out. To operate your slide outs, you have to be aired up your jacks have to be retracted, so then you would operate your slide room out or in with these buttons. You have to hold them down to move the slide out in or out. Just make sure the little warning up here is that this, the seats of the back of the uh, driver and passenger seat are far enough forward so you don't uh, have your slide out hit the back of your chair and bend the chair base or scratch or scrape up um, your fabric. Below that, you've got your door awnings, your entrance door awning and entrance door awning light. We have your privacy drapes here and your security lights here. This is for access to the RBC network uh, for diagnostics. There's more storage in this compartment. 
And here we have our two plugs for our Girard awnings. Those go over here to the right hand side. And you can see they're not powered up. There would be a red LED uh, lit up if they were on. If our generator was running or our inverter was on, we would see those lights. This is on a GFCI circuit. Okay, we just turned on the inverter, so now we can see those are powered up. But if these are not plugged in, the awnings won't work. Or if you have a GFCI breaker that's tripped in, awnings won't work. You can operate your awnings right here. The, the buttons on the side here are in and out, and the middle one is stop. So I can run my awnings out here or in, in addition to the one in the overhead, and in addition to my remote control that will show you outside. So you have one that you can take outside, you can use these, or the one in the overhead that we just saw. So just behind the passenger seat, there is a touch panel here. This touch panel controls your lighting um, in your bedroom, accent lights, all lights on off. If you go to the home screen, you can see it also controls your shades, fans, and systems, monitor panels, and it has a brightness control here that you can dim up or down. You can select uh, this dimmer switch here to move that up and down. If I go back to the home screen and I don't understand, let's say, how to operate my shades, if I press the information button and then the shades again, there's a, a list of instructions on two separate pages. So this is page one and it gives those instructions on how to operate the shades and then two uh, continues. So when I'm finished uh, reading the instructions, I understand that I can go back um, to my shades by going to the home screen. And now I'll be able to uh, press, uh, select whichever one. And when I press those, it, it, it will illuminate red. So if I do that, you can see it illuminates red and it, it controls. Once I press it again, it stops and then it goes in the opposite direction. So this panel, uh, let's say for instance, I go to systems, you'll see a TV lift up or down, water pump. I can uh, lift the TV lift up, which is just to the right of us. If I press that, you can see the TV lift is going up. Just above the TV, I have our audiovisual cabinet and Bose speaker. So the television is connected here uh, with the plugs, the HDMI plugs are there, uh, satellite connection is there, 120 volt connections are there for a satellite receiver or DVD player. These are labeled satellite and DVD. So this is where you would put those uh, players. There's more storage on both sides, on the right and the left of that audiovisual cabinet, along with another touch panel control in, near the kitchen area. Just below the TV, we have a dining room table that can be pulled out and a table leaf extension can be added. So underneath the bed, there's a storage space for additional chairs for the dining room and table leaf. So if we open this up, I'll grab the leaf and we'll add it in. So to add the leaf, we want to line up the steel uh, tabs with the 
steel tabs on the edge. So we line those up. And then once we line those up, when we push the table, that will close. There's two, there's two tabs that line up on this one and they'll line up as soon as you push them in. And there's two leaves, so I can either extend it to this position, but if I want to go further, so if I wanted to add a second leaf, I need a little more support here at the end, and there's a built-in leg that is magnetic, so I can pull that leg down, and it swings down here to hold the extra weight. So if I add that in, make sure that this is lowered in place. When I'm done and I'm ready to store the table back, I just lift up slightly and the magnet holds it in place. And to remove this, just lift it up and out, and then you can close your table back to the original size. So below the seating here at the dining table, we have more storage. Just pull the drawer out. We have a slot here for storage and then another here for the drawer. On both sides, it's the same. So with our television turned on, um, we'll, we'll use our remote control to go to the home screen, press the home button in the center. That gets to this screen. And then this icon here is our selection for menu. So just uh, toggle over to the left here and go to settings. So you'd have to scroll down to settings, then press the center button here. And now scroll over to all settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to scan for channels. If we scroll down here to broadcasting, then we select that. Press the center button again, and we go through auto program to find the channels. So press auto program. And we want to press the start to auto program. We have to have our over the air um, wine guard uh, turned on. And once that's on, then we're going to scan for air channels. Yes. And it'll go through the scan and it'll show us how many channels it found. 39 channels. So we can either scan again or we can go to our different settings or just close. You'll have to scan the same way uh, with the wine guard antenna off if you want to watch the cable channels. So if you want to scan for cable, turn the over the air antenna off and then scan again for your cable channels if you have part cable available and want to watch cable. Now we should be able to connect with a channel here. Yes. To go back to the home screen and scan for cable, scroll left, back to settings, to the right, all settings, broadcasting, auto program, and this time we want to, we're plugged in the cable, we've turned our over the air. Uh, Wine guard off, and now we can scan for the cable channels. Obviously, since we are not plugged into cable, we won't pick up any, but that's how you would scan for the cable. And you'll have to scan for channels um, for each TV location, whether it's out here or in the bedroom. Once you're done watching television and you are going to store it or 
if you're going to travel, you definitely want to have it in the stored position. Go back to Systems and TV Lift Down. And you always want to store it for travel mode. So across from the TV, we have our theater seating. Uh, the theater seating is electric um, for you know tilting back and footrest. And those controls are right here on the cup holder. So if you sit down, uh, you'll have three buttons. Um, the first one is to extend your footrest and tilt your seat back, back. You can stop the center one or stores it back in position, um, or you can you know, make a slight adjustment wherever you want to stop. There's a, a LED light on the base. You can turn that on and off. And just beside the seat on the left, you've got another control panel here for lighting and systems. Yeah, in the center, we have additional storage, a large storage area with USB charger, two ports, and 120 volt. In your ceiling, you have these louvered panels where the air conditioning comes out and the heat pump for heating. And that's on this side of the louvers, but on the other side, there's intake filters. And to get to those filters and keep them clean, you'll need to use this tool and insert it here to pull down these louvers so you can take those filters out and clean them. So the way you do that is insert the tool in the long direction here like this, rotate it, and then just pull the panel down. And that entire panel will come loose and drop down like this. Now you'll be able to see this is where the air conditioning and the heat come out and go down through the louvers. The ones that are recessed are for the filtration. So the air goes in and the filters will get dirty. So to clean those, you'll need to take the louver out, separate the filter, wash the filter in warm soapy water, let it air dry, and then put it back, and then reinsert. So just reinsert that back and clip it into place. You'll hear it snap. You'll need to do that to each of these filters in the front, in the center of the coach, and in the rear bedroom. When you're finished, these magnets line up here and then these clips line up in the center. So you'll move this to the center and then push up and the clips will catch on both ends and the magnets will also help hold it in place. Here at the front entrance of the coach, you have your smoke detector. The smoke detector has an audible alarm and an LED light that flashes to test that, to make sure the battery's good, you want to press in the center and hold for a few seconds. You'll get the audible warning and you'll see the LED light flash. That tells you your battery is good. If you don't get the audible alarm and you don't see an LED light flash intermittently, you'd want to grab a hold of that and just squeeze it and then lower this down and change your battery. So change your battery, put this back up, and do the same test that we did to make sure that your smoke detector is working. So as we're moving over into the kitchen now, we've got our cabinets. Inside of these cabinets uh, is a lot of important information, uh, starting with uh, this black case comes with your coach. If you open that case, you're going to find your warranty information, operating instructions, 
owner's operator's guides uh, that include plumbing, your heating and air conditioning, uh, your exterior, electrical, and all of your appliances. So you want to go through here and fill out your registration cards for your warranties and read your owner's operator's guides uh, to become familiar with all of your products in your coach. In addition to that, Numar includes the chassis information, uh, your owner's manuals, operator's maintenance guide for your Freightliner chassis and for your engine. So you'll need to go through these and make sure that you uh, keep up with all of your scheduled maintenance and understand your warranties. There is an additional drawer here uh, for space. In the back of the cabinet, you'll see there's a 120 volt outlet. That outlet has a cord, a plug that's plugged in to the microwave over here. The microwave has a handle on the right, just pull to open. It's a firm uh, close and a, a firm open because Numar adds a secondary latch here at the bottom. On the inside of this door, if you look, there are paint codes, gross vehicle weight information, and also more important paperwork information that you can review. Starting here at the sink, your covers can be removed and stored down below. There is a drawer here. If you look back, you'll see these can be inserted in these small felt slots to hold them in place. The sink is a telescoping one. This telescopes down and has a sprayer here. Hot and cold, on and off. We have our true induction cooktop and on the back of those covers is a cutting board on both, on both sides. You have the additional cutting board. The true induction uh, cooktop turns on and off here if you're plugged into shore power. If you want to take this outside and use it, it has uh, a place that you can put your hand in the sides and lift up. And you can unplug here and then take, take this outside and use it. You can bring it back and plug it back in. You want to make sure that's cooled down before you put your covers back on. The rounded edges always go to the outside. So we'd flip this this way. The square ones are in the middle. Just below that, we have a large drawer and this is where Numar stores your audio visual uh, controls or your, all of your remotes and including your bed mattress uh, your touch-up paints and other small um, uh, controls keys accessories Below that, you have your dishwasher. The dishwasher is not turned on, so it's locked. So you'll notice that I can't open the door. To unlock the door and open it and operate it, you'll have to have your generator on or plugged into shore power. And you can press this button here.
and it unlocks. If we want to lock the touchpad, these buttons here, we can press the lock button here. In case we have small kids that might press the buttons, we don't want them to turn anything on. We can lock or unlock here. Now it's unlocked and we can set our settings for wash. When we're ready to travel, we want to lock the door, just turn the system off. And now our door is locked. The center drawers. And of course, this is the storage underneath with our slide out and garbage receptacle. Just at the end of the kitchen here, before we go into the bedroom, we've got our pantry drawers and more storage below. We can adjust these up or down. You can see the small holes here. So this can be removed and then we can uh, change where the drawer guides go. We want to put them closer or further apart. To open, you have to press in and then release. And then once you close it again, it's locked. So there's 120 volt outlets here in the kitchen underneath the cabinets that we can use for other appliances, coffee makers, or food processors here. Um, these uh, filters for the microwave can be removed and cleaned. And there is a light here below along with the ones that Numar installs under the cabinets. Your stainless steel refrigerator is a Samsung. Above that, we have a lot of storage space over the refrigerator. The refrigerator comes with uh, doors that close and uh, they are magnetic, but Numar adds an additional lock here this lock is to keep the doors closed while you're traveling. So if we want to unlock the, the doors to open after we've come to park, and we're done traveling, then we want to slide this lock over to the right. Now we'll be able to open the doors and access the refrigerator. The, the inside of the refrigerator has a lock and unlock here if we unlock this we can pull out the water filtration device here to install it we have to push in and turn it to relock it in place so this is your water filter so you insert rotate to lock. The freezer compartment here has your ice maker tray. The ice maker is back and to the left. The bail arm needs to be down to make ice. So our refrigerator control settings and freezer temperature settings are here. Uh, it gives you the indicator of, of the actual temperature that it is. These can be used, if you scan the QR code, they can be set via your phone um, on Wi-Fi. If you notice here, you can scan the QR codes and then you can make uh, the same adjustments on your phone as you can here inside the door. To close, just close here. And then remember to hit our travel lock when we're ready to go. In the hallway area here, just past the refrigerator is a touch panel. This touch panel is your controls for all your Silverleaf settings in your coach. Located in the mid area of your coach is the Silverleaf touch panel 
and this screen will allow you to control the functions in your coach. So we have those functions labeled on the outside perimeter and then when you choose one of the outside selections, it appears in the center of the screen. So starting at the top left is the dimmer. So you can turn uh, the screen a little bit dimmer if it's later in the evening. Um, or brighter, whichever you choose. Uh, at the very top, it gives you the date and the temperature. And there's a gear icon, we'll get to that a little bit later. But at the home screen, the home screen is gonna display in the center uh, what your tank levels are, what your battery is, uh, whether the uh, batteries are bridged together and char helping each other charge. It also shows our gen set leg one and two in our shore power. So as you can see, we're not plugged into shore power. Um, our house batteries are at 85% state of charge. Our chassis batteries at 13.2 and our tanks are all empty. And that's pretty much the way whenever we make a selection, it's just gonna show in the AC power selection, we don't have power on leg one or two, our inverters are off because we're not plugged in and they're not working. So scrolling on down to DC power, we've got uh, DC means direct current. Direct current comes from our batteries. Our batteries are showing that they're 85% charged and we have 13.1 volts. These batteries are lithium. Lithium batteries always stay at about 13 volts. Uh, unlike what you were seeing uh, before, um, our chassis batteries are a uh, AGM type battery, so they show a voltage where the house batteries will show a percentage of overall state of charge. Moving on to our generator, we've got our manual start, manual stop. So if we need to turn our generator on, we can do that here. And it also shows uh, whether those are locked out. It shows activity flags uh, and you know anything that's on will be circled in blue for your generator. We can go to our AGS settings. We can turn our AGS on. It's disabled. So one of the things you wanna be sure to do if you turn your AGS on, is enable it so that the generator can come on when the batteries fall below 30% state of charge. That's something key to remember. In your water, if you select your water uh, button, you're gonna show all of the items that relate to your fresh tank or your other tanks, water pump on and off switch. We can turn our water pump on and off from here or the autofill. If we move to our climate, that relates to all the temperature settings, whether our um, heat or cool is turned on or off, we have to make those selections here. Um, it shows all zones uh, here, meaning living room, bath, and bed. So we can select cool, auto, or heat. Auto is just a, an automatic setting where you choose a temperature you want and it will select between the cooling and the heat, whether that's the heat pump or the air conditioning. So if you select heat, you're going to have to turn the Oasis on. The Oasis is your hydronic heater for your water heat and your air heat. So you need to turn your burner on here or off here. And you can also select the electric elements, which give you some uh, hot water and some heat, but not uh, a lot for the heat. It does, it does heat all your water, but if you're selecting the elements and you're gonna take a long hot shower or you need a lot of heat because it's a really cold day, you wanna make sure your burner is turned on. 
we can select individual zones or we can select the entire coach by pressing all when we're in the climate mode. So refer to your owner's manual for more information, but when any one of those cooling or heating functions come on, you're going to see that icon is highlighted with an LED, like we have the heat on now, so it's highlighted in blue. That's our ITR Oasis burner. It's going right now. If we were running our air conditioner, you'd see the snowflake highlighted. We have a block heater that preheats your engine on cold mornings. Turn that on or off. So to, when we turn on our block heater here, it turns on the outlet for the block heater, which is plugged in manually. So we wanna make sure our block heater is plugged in and turned on if we want preheat for our engine. Our battery's state uh, shows here that it's uh, currently at 13.2 volts and it gives you more detailed information on uh, what temperature and how what the temperature is in the bay. So this is a much more detailed information, how many amp hours remain. If we select the coach mode, it helps us uh, more quickly go and set or preset settings that you would normally have to maybe select manually. So if we're camping um, and we're outdoor unplugged, outdoor plugged in, you can then choose, so let's say you're outdoors and you're plugged in, <clears throat> it shows you that uh, that selection will enable your chargers and will en en enable your um, hydronic heat, which is your Oasis. So just remember that if you're going to make a selection here, it's going to display what's going to be turned on over here. And then you have to activate that function. So whichever one I choose, I need to activate in order to turn those items on. Moving over to my floor heat, that's just the heat that comes off of the floor. We can turn those on here, or we can do it like this and turn them on to number 10. These are not temperature settings. They're just numbers. The higher the number, the longer the pattern that they're on. If you turn them off, we just go here or just down. So you're not really setting a temperature, you're just setting uh, the lower settings are just a few bars. It's going to be a lower heat setting. Uh, the more bars you put, the warmer the floor is going to be in the rear of the coach, front or mid. For the ventilation fans, those are your fantastic roof vent fans that pulls air out of the coach, kitchen, master bath, or schoolroom. We can turn them on or off. So now we can go to high, medium, or low or the kitchen, uh, or the master bath, whichever we select, we can then choose that to be on or off. There is one additional uh, function. If the fan, if you turn it on, but it doesn't come on, there may be moisture on the rain sensor. You can override that by pressing the rain sensor override. So anytime that you want to override uh, the fan and make it come on in case the rain sensor uh, won't allow it to come on. You can hit the rain sensor override and the fan will come on and stay on. The door locks, you can uh, toggle them on and off for the entry door or the cargo doors. The shades and TV lift can be controlled here, TV up, down, bed, bath, or living room kitchen. You can select any one of those and then you can go in and uh, turn those on. Shades lift. And of course we can control all of our lightings in the bedroom, half bath, living room. We can turn them all on and off here. Or we can dim them however much we want to be bright or dim. And then the final icon is the gear icon. And the gear icon gives you selections for setting the clock, auto gen start settings, 
lithium battery statuses, climate options, and more. Floor heat scheduling, autofill configurations, network diagnostics, shows errors or things that may not have worked. And our next page is monitor diagnostics. If there was a monitor issue, we can see that here. We can customize our monitor if we like and miscellaneous settings. On the last page is we can view the clock, uh, test the touch screen. And that covers, uh, in general, the operation of these functions, but there is more detailed information in your owner's manual when we recommend that you go through and read uh, those in more detail. Okay, so you'll notice here, this is your vacuum cleaning system for your floors or your attachment accessories. We brought them in. Uh, this is called your intervac. Your intervac is your central vac system for your whole coach. If you sweep uh, here, you can sweep over, push this down, or excuse me, push this up and sweep in and close to turn off. If you want to uh, put your hose on and your attachments, just unzip your bag and we'll get your hose out and your attachments here. You'll need to insert the end of the hose, which is here, into the inner vac here. There's a yellow label. This label is just a warning to tell you that you, you need to install the filtration bag in the downstairs vacuum first. The same warning label is, appears here. Once you install the, the vacuum filter, install your hose. And to turn it on and off is this button right here. So you can turn it on. I put your attachments on the end here. And then to turn it off, just press it again. And that turns it off. If you need information on how to use this in more detail, just scan the QR code. Uh, this will also give you information on the battery that's in here. If you need to replace the battery, um, if it won't come on, you'll probably have to change that battery. To store this back in the bag, we just want to make sure that the hose is situated so that this handle is on the outside of the bag so nothing bumps it. These attachments don't bump it to turn it on. So we just put this here and then we can put our attachments inside. Okay, so moving into the half bath area, this is your half bath door to enter the bathroom. Just open and the door will swing out. As I enter the bathroom here on my right, we have the sink. We have the medicine cabinet here. There's a 120 volt plug inside the cabinet. On the left side, of the medicine cabinet, we've got our breaker box and sub panels and fuse panels. And they're all labeled. There's a label here for all of our fuses down here in this area. Each one has a number here and here. So if you have an issue with any one of the named ones, let's say your patio light wasn't coming on, that's label F4, then just go to F4, pull the fuse out, Take a look at that fuse. If you need to replace it, Numar gives you the replacement fuses right here. Just make sure that you grab the right one and then insert it. Just to the left is your floor heat uh, GFCI. If you need to uh, reset, reset it, it's always green, but if it happens to go red, you can just press this and then again, to reset, make sure you see the green LED light here. Just above that are the inverter one and two. Each inverter operates the uh, items that are listed. So 
This inverter one operates the fuse panel, excuse me, this inverter one operates the front air conditioner, the driver's slide out, and the passenger slide out. This inverter two operates the microwave, bedroom, bathroom, basement, and refrigerator. So each label straight up from there, like this would be the refrigerator. If the refrigerator was off, it would be in the down position. You'll need to turn that back on to reset. Whenever a breaker trips, it doesn't always trip all the way down. Sometimes it only trips about halfway. So then in that case, you'd have to press it all the way off and then back up to reset it. Just above our sub panels, for those appliances, then the inverter operates these. The inverter has to be on to operate these. Above that, you've got your breaker box for your other appliances. These appliances don't need to have the inverter turned on because they just operate off of your shore cord power coming in or the invert or, or the generator. So you'll see these are all labeled engine block heater, rear air conditioner, cooktops, and um, over on this side, you've got like your washer uh, and your dishwasher. So if these are tripped, it's the same way. They would be over to the left. You would have to reset it to the right. Just below that, we have our toilet flush control and water level control. The blue buttons add, the top one adds water to the bowl to fill more water in the bowl. The lower one flushes. The green LED light tells you it's ready to flush. There is an LED light that may come on below the green one. If it comes on, it's either going to be an amber, which means your black tank is 75% full, or if it turns red, say it was amber and then it turns red, that means your black tank is completely full and you won't be able to flush your toilet until you empty your black tank. Below that, you've got additional storage here and here. We have the emergency exit door just behind the toilet. If you need to get out of the coach and you can't get to the front door, you would unlock this one and the door handle and open the door to exit. There's a ladder that's inside of this panel. So we just pull this panel out and loosen the Velcro here. Now we just flip this down and the ladder telescopes down to the ground. And we just step over here and get out of the coach. If we need to restore this, we just push, it, push this back and telescope in. Lift up. And now we can store this back in place with our panel. And close the door, make sure it's firmly closed. So to relock this door, just move this lock to the left and this one to the right. Just above us, we have our fantastic vent. We can turn that on manually just by opening this one here and then turn the fan on or we can turn it on all automatically by the touch panel in the bathroom here. Go to the home screen, fans, and then choose stool room. And set it to high, medium, or low. Fan comes on. When we're finished and we want the fan off, we just touch fan off and the lid will close and the fan will turn off. This fan can also be turned on 
on the outside silver leaf panel. If for any reason this fan won't come on, there is a fuse here. Just turn and we can check our fuse to make sure it's good. If we need to replace it, put it back and twist, push in and twist to the right. As we enter the bedroom and we look up on the ceiling, we see another detector. This one's not a smoke detector, it's a CO2 detector. Operates the same way, press the center, hold, make sure we hear the audible tones and see the LED light come on. If we don't see the tones or the LED light, we need to check the battery, same as the front. Squeeze, pull down, change the battery, and then retest with the new battery. Make sure it does sound the alarm. If it doesn't with the new battery, we'll have to replace it. The slider door here will come over and lock into place in the bedroom. To unlock the slider, just push down. and it's locked into place. So now it won't move. Put it back over for travel. Now it's locked for travel mode. Moving over to the corner, we have our temperature sensor for the rear area. We have our speakers. We can turn one speaker on here or a second over there. If we have our front Excite Radio Infotainment Center on to radio or Sirius, we can listen to the radio back here. We have additional storage above. There is an access port here. If you have a CPAP machine, you can set that up here and plug it in. There are 120 volt outlets here. We can plug in uh, that machine and then just run our hose down here. Um, our nightstand also has a 120 volt outlet inside of it. So if we open up our door, we'll be able to see that inside of the nightstand. There's also an access port here that you can bring down a cord or a hose. And the nightstand is the same. You have another 120 volt outlet there. So underneath the bed, there's the table leaves and additional storage area here. There are access holes that you can lift these panels up after you remove the screws to get to the electrical and the motors that operate the bed slide. To close, just push down. On the wardrobe side, is the slide out control for the bedside. So I, if I press the in or the out, I have to hold it. As I press down, you can see the slide moves in. When I release the button, it stops to go back out. Just press and hold to go out. It stops automatically. We have another systems control panel here to control all the lighting and the shades in the bedroom. If I wanted to raise the shades up, I just come here to the panel, go to shades, and then I can choose uh, which shades I want to open or close here. We have more storage on the side of our TV. And over here we have our audio visual cabinet for connecting to the TV, whether we want to connect to satellite or DVD player, we have both. We have additional 120 volt outlets here, so you can put your DVD player or satellite receiver here, and that's for this TV. We have
have more storage here, these three drawers, and below. So as we move into the bathroom in the rear of the coach, we have a pocket door here. It locks and unlocks the same as the one that you enter the bedroom. Push down to unlock. Close to lock. Press down, unlock, and open. And that's our travel mode position. As we enter the bathroom, we've got our shower. Our shower door is locked. Here's the lock for it. It has magnets to keep the door closed, but for travel, we want to make sure that that door has this lock moved over. To open, we just grab a hold and pull. In the shower, we have the aqua miser. The aqua miser is going to allow you to turn the water on, but not actually turn the shower on until the water is hot. So how do we do that? This is the indicator here to tell you when the water is hot. But to turn that on, you have to go to the systems panel here, go to the home screen and press systems, and then you'll see aquamizer. So if we turn that on, now we can see the aquamizer's on. Once that's turned on, we need to move this small handle over to the recirculate position here to the right and wait for that light to turn red. Once that's red, then we'll turn this handle back over here. We can turn on our shower here and adjust the temperature here. This handle controls either the wand or the overhead, and this controls the temperature. If you want to refer to this uh, AquaView brochure on the back side, it explains on how to turn the Aquamizer on and off. When you're finished, just go back to your panel, turn your Aquamizer off, and remember, when you're winterizing the coach or filling your water tank, you want to have this turn to the off position, not recirculate. Otherwise, your tank is going to fill up and overflow. When you're finished, just close the door and lock for travel mode. Just beside the shower, we have our folding doors to open up. And we can see our lighting controls generator controls, Wi-Fi router, and on the back wall, we have a special list of all the appliances in your coach, along with your seating, uh, additional seating that comes with your coach. If you need to replace any of your appliances, they're all listed there. In addition to that, in the back wall, we have your safe to store anything um, of value or importance. When we're finished in this area, we can just close the folding door and the light will go out automatically. We have the sink. We have our medicine cabinet. An additional 120 volt plug in the back. Water, cold and hot on and off. More storage here below. And these two louvers are for the heat exit and return air for the heat to come out. Just kind of makes a circle here to heat this bathroom. Below that we have the engine cover. The engine cover can be removed to access the engine for service. To access the engine cover, we have to remove this wooden panel first. The wooden panel has small clips on each end. We just remove this panel. The clips are on the end. And then we take these plugs out of both sides, and then we can lift this floor panel out 
to get to the engine. The blue cords connect to this panel, so you'll have to unplug the blue cord when you remove this access engine cover panel. Then plug it back in when you reinstall it. When you're finished with that, then you would just put this cover back and line up with the clips. Beside the sink area, you've got your washer and dryer. Your dryer's on top with the settings for heat and timer. Your wash cycles, selection, cold hot water, and touch panel here. There's a notice here that just warns you that you want to remove the outside drain cap before operating the washing machine. What they're telling you is that the gray water that's coming out of here is going to fill up your gray tank. And you want to have your gray tank valve open so that all that water doesn't flood your gray tank and overfill into your shower. So just remember, if you're going to do um, washing machine uh, washing, open your gray tank valve and the cap that goes out the sewer so you don't over flood your gray tank. At the toilet, you have your toilet flush control valve and water fill. It operates the same as the one in your half bath with the blue one on the top filling the bowl with water and the blue one on the bottom flushing. The green light tells you it's ready, but if you see an amber light or yellow light, that would be 75% full on your black tank. If you see it turn red, the LED light that's not lit up there, if it turns red, your black tank's full, you're going to have to empty your black tank before you can flush. There's more cabinet space here on the sidewall. And just above is another fantastic vent. It operates the same as the one in the half bath. At the ceiling, we have more louvers that clean the same way as the ones we showed you earlier. Pull the vent down, remove the filter, clean it and then reinstall. We've moved outside. We're gonna start here on the driver's side at the front to show you how to open the front hood. The latch release for the hood is right here. So you'll have to grab a hold of that, pull it, you'll hear a click. Now you can come up to the front and you can see everything on the inside. On just a quick overview here. If you look to the right here, you're going to see this is your wiper washer uh, fill. Just open that to fill that when it gets near empty. You've got your air horns here, street horn, auxiliary air fill. If your engine is uh, on <clears throat> um, and your coach is aired up, you'll be able to have uh, the connection coupler that connects in here. And we'll show you that hose you can fill your air uh, inflatables or if you need uh, to put air in your tires you can do that there's a hot water spigot here uh, you can connect to this uh, for hot water outside towards the bottom of that you'll see a drain for the hot water to winterize you can open this and then that'll drain out uh, your water and then you can winterize You've got your uh, ITR Oasis filter here that filters the diesel fuel that goes into your hydronic heating system. You've got your generator start stop switch here. If you want to start the generator from the outside, just press that button down. And it'll start right up. Make sure that the breaker is flipped up so you get power. To turn it off, just press down to stop. Sometimes if this breaker is tripped, it's not tripped all the way. It might be just, it looks like about like that. You need to go all the way down and then back up to turn that on. Otherwise you won't get power in inside your breaker box. You've got your oil fill, your coolant fill. Moving over here, you've got your 
HVAC system for the front cockpit area. You've got down below, you've got a reservoir tank for your hydraulic jacks. Uh, the white cap um, down below is a twist to open. I'll show you that here. If we open, if we take up, take that cap off of the reservoir tank for our HWH, it's going to show the level of the automatic transmission fluid. We want to check this fluid with the jacks up and the slide rooms out. Once we've checked it and we're good, we can put the cap back on and tighten. And then to close the hood, we just reach up and push down. Uh, we'll start here with the mirror. This mirror is automatically adjusted from the inside, but if you can't get enough adjustment to see where you want, you can loosen these screws, these Allen head screws, and you can turn the mirror or tilt it however you like. If that's not enough adjustment, there's another one here. You can take this cap off and you can loosen the nut here and you can move this whole arm if you need to. And then retighten, put our cap back on. So these are your headlights and turn signals, fog lights, and on top of the marker lights. In the middle of the windshield is your mobile eye. The mobile eye displays in the center of your glass dash at the top with two yellow lane markers. So this will tell you whether you're in or out of your lane. It'll give you lane warnings, lane warning assists. This mirror adjusts the same as the other one. As we move over into the door side, you can see there's an attachment here for your flag post that just inserts here for your flag. Just below that, you've got your right hand camera that you can turn on and see this side if you go to the camera settings or whenever you turn your signal on to turn right, that camera is gonna turn on. Above that, you've got your door awning. So on the outside, the door awning is actually being controlled from the inside. The remote won't control the door awning. It only controls the patio awnings. So you'll control the door awning from inside in the overhead at the front and the lights on and off. And then to store it, you'd go in and it stores. So. If for any reason the door awning uh, is maybe not working and you want it out or maybe it's out and you want to retract it, uh, you have a motor failure or power failure, just insert this long rod into the end and you can open and close it manually. That's open. And then the reverse is closed. So just below the door awning, we have our porch light, which you turn on as you enter the coach on the left there. We have our Trimark door entrance handle. So if we don't have our key fob or our keys to unlock the coach, if we remember our code to enter here, our five digit code, we can unlock the door. So when you get your coach new on delivery, it's it's going to be one, two, three, four, four, one. And you heard the door unlock. So now we can open the door. At the very bottom, you have the doorbell. So you can hear that. We showed you on the steering column how to reset this code. So when you take ownership, we recommend that you enter your new five digit code twice. That's your master code that nobody else would know how to get in your coach. To unlock and lock the door manually, you can of course use your keys. Uh, the ones that say try mark on the key 
are the ones that unlock the ones on the outside handle. So the, the long one is for the deadbolt. You can watch the deadbolt as it moves in and out. You want to make sure that's retracted before you shut the door. And then the door lock and unlock is the one just below. Lock and unlock. I can manually lock and unlock from the inside with the deadbolt or the door handle here. If I have the key fob, which I do here, the key fob can be used to lock and unlock only the door handle or the baggage compartments. So the door handles here, there's lock and unlock. And that's my baggage door here, lock and unlock. To operate the screen lock, this screen door right now is locked onto the entrance door. If I'm on the inside, I can just press this handle down and then I can open the screen door that way. If I'm on the outside, I can just press down on this one and then open the screen door. When I close the door, there's two ways to close it. You can close it soft and it'll latch into the first latch, but it won't actually be ready for travel. But it's a good way to close the door without slamming it in case someone's inside sleeping. You can just close the door in the first latch. It's closed, but it's not actually ready to be driven. If you want to close it into the second latch, you need to open it and close it more firmly like that. Now you can see the door is flush uh, to the trim and now you would be ready to travel. You notice that the, the steps came out when you opened the door. We saw the step override switch. I'm going to go in and uh, turn that on. And then what you'll see is when I close the door, the steps will stay out or extended. So I, I hit the override for the step. Now if I close this, you'll see the steps will stay out. All right, so moving back, we have our slide topper awning that goes the full length of the slide out. That is a fabric that automatically opens when the slide room comes out and covers the top of the slide. So you have to remember that if you've been parked a while in one area to check and make sure there's no uh, objects or branches, leaves underneath the fabric when you close it. Just uh, moving back behind the wheel here, we have our marker lights, our fuel fill, and our, uh, our docking lights. Above our slide topper awning, we have our Girard awnings. Those are your Girard patio awnings. It helps to use the remote when you're outside. That way you can watch the awning come out to make sure you're not gonna hit anything. If you run them from the inside, you should have a spotter out here to tell you uh, that you're clear. So you can run them from the inside, but if you have the remote control and you come outside, it's going to be easier. This is the number one. This is number one. That's number two. So if we go to our channel here, we select number one and we press out, that awning will come out. If we then go to channel two and press out, then our rear awning will come out. Any time that we like, we can hit stop and it'll stop that channel. So if I go back to the uh, first awning, number one, and hit stop, or if it's windy like it is today, and the awning starts to move, 
it may automatically retract like the rear one did and now the front one's doing. So you can see that there is a shake sensor in the awning. It's too windy. The awning's gonna retract. There are LED lights on the bottom that you can turn on and off. And if for some reason you lose power or the awning is stuck, the motor is not working, you can get on top of the coach and in the center of both the awnings, there is a small opening at the top of the awning. It's like an Allen wrench opening. You can insert that and turn and the awning will retract or extend either way. So that's your emergency retraction tool and that's your, um, that's e and you can operate both awnings at the same time by going to channel zero. So I can open both awnings at the same time I can stop them at the same time, and I can close them at the same time, all with the remote. So as we move into our first baggage or compartment door back behind the front wheel, we've got our basement freezer refrigerator combo. It operates on both 12 volt and 120. The 12 volts plugged in, if I wanted it to operate off the 120, I just plug that in as well. So now it will select whichever power source is available to load the refrigerator freezer. You just slide the tray out. We can load here. And we can adjust the temperature settings manually or if we connect to the refrigerator via Bluetooth, we can do that by scanning the QR code and going to the Dometic website. And you can download the app on your phone and then you can uh, just and see what temperatures are um, via Bluetooth. To close it, we just slide it in and it locks. Our next compartment back is an easy glide tray. Here's the control for open and close. And you'll notice there's a couple long screws that are used to manually retract your slide rooms, your slide outs. If for any reason they're not working, these can be attached on the inside and then these can be used to drive the slide out or retract it. So keep those handy in case that might be an issue that you have. In our next compartment, we've got another easy glide tray along with the manual retract handle for the door awning. This door, when it closes, locks this door because there's no handle on this door. This is the handle right here. It's called a suicide door. So to open it, just push down and this door will open and you'll have that easy glide tray open and close along with spare tile. The spare tile is for your inside floor. It matches the color. It's the same lot number that you have inside. Make sure you close this door first and then this one. Just above that, we have our outside entertainment center. Has your television and sound bar. You can um, put your Excite Radio infotainment center on the inside to house mode, and then you can play the radio out here through your Bose if you set this over to the dash radio side, or if you want to have the television on and the television sound to come through the bows, just flip it to the left 
to the TV side, and then you'll be playing the TV out here. You can extend the TV out here and turn. And putting it back, there's a magnet that holds it in place. In addition to that, out here we've got some extra USB charge plugs and 120 volt outlets if you need to plug in out here. When you're finished, just close the door and lock if you need to. Have our security light there. In our next compartment back, we have a large storage compartment. And if you look down here, we have our bedroom slide out control, our floor heat control, and another 120 volt outlet. Just behind the wheel, we have the HWH jack. Make sure that's completely stowed in the up position before travel. We have more docking lights here. More storage here. And in our last door on the passenger side, we've got our chassis batteries. Our chassis batteries are here. To connect our chassis batteries to the coach, we have to turn this disconnect on. Right now it's on. If we're going to store the coach for uh, several days or longer, you wanna make sure and turn those off. So that saves the energy in your batteries so that it's not being drained from the ECMs and other items in the coach. When you're ready to start the coach up again and travel, just come back out, open this door, and turn them back on. You'll notice a small fuse holder here. That's just for your solar panel up on the roof. If it's not working, check that fuse. There is a compartment in the back here with relays and fuses uh, that are for the chassis. That panel can be removed, and on the inside of that back panel, all the fuses are labeled, and there's spare fuses in there if you need them. Okay, so we're at the back of the coach here. This is your engine compartment. The engine compartment can be open and closed with this small latch here, but you want to have one hand here so that when it opens, it doesn't come out and, and you know hit you here. So push down, and then... It'll release towards you. As you move into the engine compartment area here, over on the right-hand side is your ITR Oasis. It takes Century uh, boiler fluid. You can get that from Numar. You want to make sure that's uh, you know up to the least cold. We've been running it, so it's up in the hot area. You've got your transmission. Uh, dipstick and fill. You've got your oil dipstick and fill here. You've got your power steering fluid here. You can see the level you're at and fill. You've got your fuel filter here. This is your cooling system and cap. Uh, never take this cap off if you've been uh, running the engine or the engine's warm. Uh, wait till it completely cools down and then you can check the level here and you can add this particular type It's listed here on the outside of the tank. Just above that. You've got your Block heater plug Make sure that's plugged in and you can turn your block heater on from inside your Silverleaf uh, touch control panel There's an exterior light that you can turn on here just below that, you've got your air filter indicator. If this ever jumps up into the red with the engine running, that yellow diaphragm, if it doesn't stay in the green, if it goes all the way to the red, this filter inside the canister will need to be replaced. This canister draws air all the way up in the upper corner of the cap. So if, the, if there's anything in front of those uh, louvers that has to be cleaned or removed otherwise you're not going to get air inside your engine all right so if we close this compartment 
Uh, we can look down here below the compartment. We have our um, seven pin plug. We have auxiliary air for your Air Force One air. We have our hitch and towing information along with weights. And there is a lanyard here. This lanyard helps release the air out of the system so that the moisture uh, can be removed. And you should do this daily if you're operating your coach. Just grab a hold of this and pull it. You can hear air release out of the system. That's going to get rid of the moisture and uh, keep any uh, moisture from building up in your air tanks or air lines. Okay, so on the outside of the coach here, you've got your rear camera, rear brake light, upper marker lights, um, backup lights, brake lights and turn signals here on both sides, along with the reflective strip on both sides and reflective uh, at the each um, bottom. You've got your transmission and engine cooling radiator grill here. Uh, this needs to be clear just like the grill up for the uh, air intake. So if you see any debris on the inside of that uh, grill, you'll have to clean that out. This compartment, you've got your DEF tank and fill. More, another docking light. This slide out has a slide topper on it as well. And um, just behind the rear wheel, you can see the HWH jack. It's in the stowed away position. This compartment is the water bay compartment. The water bay is a heated compartment. So on cold days like today, uh, if it got much colder, there is a heater that would automatically come on. How does that happen? Numar installs this small thermostat right here. That thermostat kicks on the heat as long as your ITR Oasis is on, and the fan blows heat in this compartment and keeps all of your tanks uh, about 40 degrees or warmer. So looking at the right side of this compartment, you've got your filter. This canister and this filter comes with new with the coach. It looks like this. And you'll need to take your filter wrench that comes inside the bag inside. You take this off and then you'll just drop this filter in. Okay, just like that. If you're going to winterize the coach, you don't want this filter in. So if you're ready to winterize the coach, take this out and save it. Otherwise, if you run the winterizing solution through that, uh, you'll ruin the filter. To, uh, now that we've got our filter installed, we'd want to add water to the coach. Uh, you can either turn it on for city water or you can add water to your main tank and fill your freshwater tank. So you take this, you extend it to the water supply of no more than 60 PSI. There's a warning here. If it's more than 60 PSI, uh, we'd have to uh, reduce that down with a regulator. But once we connect our water line, we'll be able to select where we want that water to go in the coach. We can either select it to go into the manual tank fill mode and auto override. That fills our fresh tank if we have it pointed down. If we go to the right, it'll just feed water into the coach. That's called city supply. It just goes into your coach and all of your water lines. If you select auto tank fill, then you go to your silver leaf panel, which is outside here or inside, then you can select water and you can turn on your autofill here, either to top off or on. So again, you can do that either here at this touchpad or inside at the large 10 inch 
touchpad. If you select the manual one, which is down, pointing down, you'll kind of keep an eye on the water tank because once it's full, water starts to go out of the tank, uh, out of the overfill, and you'll see that coming out of the bottom of the coach. It's not dangerous, it's just that it's got no, nowhere where else to go. And uh, once you're done filling that tank, then select either one of these. And that's how you uh, fill your water tank or get uh, water into the coach. Just below that is a water tap. If you wanted to uh, put a hose on here and use uh, water in um, another area to maybe to clean your coach, connect that on here. You'll notice uh, there are low point drains here. And there's a low point drain way back in that corner. What are those and why? Those are used to winterize the coach. If you look at the winterizing instructions right here to use a winterizing kit, it explains that those low point drains in the handle, which you have to reach way back to open that up to drain the uh, fresh water tank, and then you need to drain the hot and cold water lines. Once those are drained, then you would put it into the winterizing position here and here and take this hose, insert it into your potable antifreeze, turn your water pump on, which is here, you can turn your water pump on, and then you'll draw the water pump, instead of pulling water out of the fresh tank, it's going to pull water, it's going to pull your antifreeze into all of your water lines and then you'll have to go in the coach and open up those drains, uh, those faucets, so that this solution goes into all the lines so they don't freeze. And appliances. You'll have to turn your appliances on as well and cycle the appliance on through a cycle so that all of the antifreeze is in that appliance. So if for any reason you're not getting pressure, uh, water pressure, or you're not being able to pull the antifreeze through, there's a screen that goes into the water pump when it draws through. You can loosen this up, you take that out, you can remove that screen and check it. If it's dirty, clean it, insert it back in, and then put this back on and tighten. And then you should have water pressure or you should be able to draw the antifreeze in. There is a setting that you can go to uh, for lights dimmer or brighter. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't, oh, I can't, I'm trying to get to the dim or bright. Okay, if you're at the home screen here, you can dim this screen or make it brighter. The water button is the one for turning the water pump on or the autofill. You can go to the lights and select uh, security lights, either the driver or passenger side on or off. And I can turn the generator on here, uh, manual start and stop. And that's what this panel can control from the outside. Just below that, you've got a shower with the handle so you can rinse your hands or any of these other items here. So now we're gonna show you how to empty your, your black and gray tank. So there are two different ways that we can empty the gray and the black tank, either through the SantaCon hose, which is the smaller hose. And what does the SantaCon do? It grinds up the effluent, so it's macerating. That's this hose. The other way is through the larger hose manually. So we're going to show you the macerator first. Um, you would get this hose out and unscrew the cap. After that's unscrewed, then you would insert this into the drain for the sewer. All right, so we have the drain uh, for the macerator, connect, uh, SantaCon macerator connected to the sewer. And now, before we turn the SantaCon on, which is the macerator that, that pumps fluid through this hose, 
we want to open the SantaCon line. So this is the line we'd pull open, which it's, it's open now. Open now. So pull that open. Then we would turn this on after we would open either the gray or black. Typically, we like to do the gray tank first, just for a, a minute. We would open this valve for the gray tank, pull it towards you. That opens the gray. Then, since we've already opened this one, this gray tank's open, we turn on the RV SantaCon, and that pumps the fluid through this line. Once we've got a little bit of the gray going through, we know it's pumping, turn the gray off, and go back to the black, open the black tank here, and then turn the SantaCon back on, pump all the black out, close the black, come back to the gray, open the gray, and finish the SantaCon process until all the gray is pumped out. How do you rinse the gray and black tank? These are the gray tank and black tank rinse ports. If you open these up, it says open the gate valve and turn on the RV SantaCon when in use. So if I'm going to use this, I want to open my gate valve, which is here for the gray or here for the black, and then turn on the RV SantaCon. When I'm finished, turn off the water supply here, close this port, and then I can close, turn off my RV SantaCon and close either one of those. When I'm ready to store the RV SantaCon hose, I close the gate valve to the RV SantaCon and store the hose inside. That's the first process of using the RV SantaCon to empty the tanks. But if I just want to empty the tanks without going through the macerator RV SantaCon, I can empty the tanks right here, connecting a large hose onto this port, stretching that over to the, uh, the black tank, the sewer line, then I can empty my black tank and my gray tank just by opening the gate valves, preferably the black tank first and then uh, the gray tank second to rinse out that uh, hose. When I'm finished, I can put the cap back on here and store that hose away. So when I'm ready to store the fresh water supply hose, it has a small button here to press to um, pull the, the reel in. There's a reel motor, so I press that, and that will pull my hose in. So in our next compartment forward here on the driver's side, we've got our ITR Oasis and our cord reel. So we're gonna start here and tell you a little bit about your uh, ITR Oasis. It is a hydronic system for heating your water and your air in your coach. The blue lines are the cold coming in. The red lines are the hot water going out. And these lines are looping back to the engine so that even when you're running down uh, the road, it's uh, providing uh, heat to this system, so you'll still have hot water when you come to your destination uh, for a short period of time. Um, when you turn this on here, you're going to see a green light that comes on the very top. If you press it, you can see the green light come on there. If you press it again, it will go out. If it's out, you won't be able to turn the heat on inside or you won't have hot water. So you got to make sure that this is on outside and then you can go to your silver leaf screen and turn on your, your other uh, elements or your burner. So this has two ways of heating up. It has a burner, which you can see the flame through here, and it has two electric elements. So you have to have your burner on for long hot showers or if you're in cold climates and you want to keep your water bay warm, you must have your burner turned on. 
if you only turn on the electric elements, you'll just have a small amount of hot water. There's a Hobbs meter at the top, tells you how many hours of operation you've had. And these lights at the top turn green when they're operating. The one on the top should always be on. If you see any red lights on these, igniter, flame out, voltage, or low water, you have an issue with those, uh, with those uh, systems. In addition to that, there's green lights that appear over here when the, the blowers or the uh, pumps are on, and all of these lights should be green on this panel. If you see red lights here, uh, you can hear the Oasis burner just kicked on. If I want to shut that off, I just press and that will turn it off. Again, if there's any red lights here or on the bottom here, those systems are faulting. You can try a reset. If the red light stays on, you'll have to get it serviced. Just above that, we have our park cable. The cable needs to be plugged in and the cable, ho the cable line can be routed through here with this. Uh, and there's enough room in there for the cord and the cable if you come up through here and plug it in. Moving over here, this is our intervac system. This is a hose attachment, so you can attach your hoses here uh, for vacuuming in this area or anywhere around the outside. There is a manual on-off. If the one on the handle isn't working or you want to use this one, you can turn it on and off there. We can see the bag in there is inserted. To change the bag, you'd have to remove this. To connect the power cord, your 50 amp shore cord, just pull it out manually. Once you get it out and ready to plug in the post, you're, you can then lock this in and close the door. Once you're plugged in, you're going to see the display in the power monitor telling you how much voltage you have and on which line one or two. If there's any problems with the power supply or there's a fault, that is going to show up right here in this window. So you can monitor what's going on with your power just by looking at this power monitor window. The transfer switch that transfers the power from the shore cord to the generator is right behind it. So that's your automatic transfer switch behind. The light inside this compartment automatically goes out when you close the door. One last thing about your ITR Oasis, if it doesn't come on or, or it just fails from the controls inside, but you still have the power light on here, it could be an issue with the Silverleaf system. If that was the case, you could take this control panel here, which Numar supplies a manual touch control, and you could use this to plug into the cable here. If you unplug this cable, you can plug it in here, and then you could operate it manually. So in an emergency, uh, this is here. If your Silverleaf system doesn't power up or show you uh, the operations for elements or burner, you have this one to fall back on. To store or to stow away the power cord, just loosen here. Once you've got it free, this switch here will reel it in for you. In our next compartment forward, we have the storage area just beside the Easy Glide tray that goes out only on that side. We have our fuse panel and all the fuses are labeled there on the inside. So if we uh, trip a fuse or light or something won't operate, we can come back here and refer to our, our tags. The two white tags tell us uh, which fuse number or which breaker, the ones in the center of the breakers, the ones up the top are fuses. 
and then you would either uh, replace the fuse or if you have one of the larger fuses here that are popped that center button whether it's yellow white green or blue just press that back in to reset those those are resettable fuses in this compartment you'll notice on the inside of the door are two fans that pulls heat out the heat goes into this door in through the bottom of the door and exits out the bottom of the coach whenever this compartment is 90 degrees or warmer these fans will be on as soon as you open this door the fans shut off so if it's really a hot day over 100 degrees and these fans aren't running it's because the door is not closed if you want to check and make sure the fans are running and working you can close this door and go around and look at the fans they should be running if it's over 90 degrees why are they there to keep this compartment and these inverters um, at a temperature that they operate best at you'll notice on each inverter there is a green LED light that says what it is doing whether it's inverter enabled AC in or fault if you have a fault there's a clear fault button here on both just press that button to clear this fault light here when the coach is plugged in you'll notice that you have AC in this light will be green and uh, once these are illuminated that they're they're on and charging uh, this one is inverter enabled if the inverter is not on and you don't have green lights just press this button here and that will turn the inverter on in this compartment we've got our lithium batteries and our BMS if I hold my hand under the BMS you see a, a blue reflection light that's the same blue light with the button that you have inside of your overhead at the front of the coach. If for any reason the button won't turn your batteries back on, you can come out here, reach under the bottom, press that button to turn your BMS back on. That'll give you the power out of these batteries going back into your coach. And beside that, we have an opening small compartment for your sewer hose. We have our fuel fill door here. This, whether it's this side or the other, it fills the same tank with diesel fuel. Docking lights, marker lights. In our last compartment forward is for our chassis fuses, re fuses and relays. These are in addition to the ones that are in the uh, opposite corner of the coach in the chassis battery compartment area these can be viewed uh, and the names of the fuses just by pressing these tabs open there's one on each side you have to release and then you can see on the inside cover which fuses they control the one here in the center is the wiper relay so if the wipers weren't working i check this relay um, any of the, they're all labeled so if, if i've got any of these um, that aren't working like say my pedal adjustments not working so I'd go to here to number 23 they line up the same way so that'd be over on this side and then I would pull that relay or that fuse to check it when I'm finished servicing it I would put this cover back on and I'm ready to travel this is your ECM here in the center that's the brain of your coach or one of the brains Above that, Numar installs this green fuse panel for all of the uh, cockpit uh, area appliances and shades and controls, and they're all labeled. This one is keyless entry. The one above that is docking lights. They're small print. This one's the step cover. So if my step cover wasn't working 
and my red LED was lit up, that means that this fuse is, or this resettable fuse isn't working. So I'd pull that out and replace it. If one of these smaller ones had a red LED light above it, I would pull that out because, it, and then I'd look and see if it was blown. If it was, the red light would be on and I need to change that. If I need to change this, we have extra ones here. Match the fuse number, get the right one, and then just insert it back in place. When I do that, that red light should go out. Just above that, we have what we looked at um, earlier was our release for our hood. And this is the 120 volt box for our floor heat and it's labeled the floor heat for the living room. So if my floor heat in the living room needed to be checked, that's where I would check my floor heat right here. This is our slide out. Uh, this is uh, for the front area of the coach. This is a small slide out, just goes back about uh, eight feet. But before I, I operate the slide room or extend it, I wanna make sure that there's a gap here. I don't want these to be touching. If I go to the front and the rear, this gap is called the reveal. That reveal should be a pretty close to the same at the top, sides, and bottom. All the way around should be about 3 8 If it's within about an eighth of an inch on all the sides, close to 3 8 I'm I'm ready to extend that slide out extend it out, I'm good. Now, if this is too close or it's about touching, I'd want to make sure I was on air ride. So it's important to remember, get your coach aired up and then check these reveals because if you're not on air, uh, that's not how we built the coach. We built the coach on air, so that's where they're going to line up. So air up your coach, run your room out and in, if that reveal, and a lot of times it does, it adjusts back to where it should be, you're good. Um, so anytime you see a real close gap, you may be in a too unlevel position to open that slide or you're not on air. So get on air first. If you're still seeing a big gap there, run it out and back in, and that gap should go back to that 3 8 you always want to make sure you're on air, run your slide rooms out before you put your jacks down. After your slides are out, then you put your jacks down to level and do the opposite of that um, to retract your rooms. Always be on air, your jacks will come up, then you would air up the coach before you run the rooms in.